This is Salamancer, and you are watching Creepy Gmod Face TV. Hopefully we get to find a lot more of these, because I am a big fan. <laughs> oh, that is just scary. But we do have a game today between the Runaway 5 and Sinner's Truck Problems, which... Okay, so, wait a minute. Juanetta Gaming. What on earth is going on here? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. Apparently, the Juanetta Gaming Team, a.k.a. Sinner's Truck Problems, or whatever, likes to change team name a lot, but already they have lost two players immediately to some good coordinated spam from the blue team, and so uh, right away, some good kills coming in here. It does look like they will have to retreat. Team Nasty, Juanetic Gaming, is going to lose the first mid-fight to the Runaway 5, and they are sounding like Chetty Cathy's over there on the Runaway 5, looking pretty solid team so far. Going to take some spam as they walk through this corridor, but actually not a heck of a lot, as Juanetic Gaming Team is not really in position to stop this. So we are going to keep it on the bathtub mannequin cam, a.k.a. Davey, as he awaits the incoming Uber here. He's going to actually take the Uber to counter the red team, and pretty soon this Uber is going to run out. There you go. So this is looking pretty solid so far for the Runaway 5. Just got to chase this demo man down. Don't let him get in the sewers. There you go. Shoot him up against that door there, and they do need to keep their medic alive. No, Loki is down. And by the way, Loki is the overseer. So that's Chick. And I think last time I casted Runaway 5, I totally don't remember that. But wow, nice turnaround there by the Juanetic Gaming team. I really don't know what they want to be called, but I assume if they have tagged up as Juanetic, that is just what they are going to get called. So deal with it. Because, yeah, they're, they're not called that on ESCA anymore. I don't care. I don't care, man. Anyway, uh, they did a fantastic job defending that second point. Um, which is surprising because they did pop the Uber first, but after their Uber was over, they just didn't take any damage. They used it to kind of get away, get some high ground, and avoid a lot of the incoming damage from the Runway 5 team. Uh, most of their soldiers, both their soldiers, most, <laughs> like, like, one and a half soldiers? Anyway, both of their soldiers did, uh, uh, jump sort of in a weird angle and weren't able to put damage down immediately during that Uber. Davis trying to take the sewers, but he's got to be careful about that. Trying to flank through here is very difficult, and already they have lost their demo man. So the Runway 5... Gonna hold on to this second point pretty effectively. That is a very standard sticky trap that if you have watched my CP process video, by the way, I die to that, like, all the time. Uh, I just walk around the corner and I'm like, oh, hey, there's stickies there. What do you know? But the Runaway 5 gonna jump up here on CP process. They are jumping in and the first man to die, Scarlet. I actually don't know if it's a man, but I guess I wouldn't doubt it. And there you go, the Ubers are popped for both teams just about at the same time as Team Nasty, one at gaming in the red. Uh, gonna have theirs run out just a little bit later. They will be standing on that point, attempting to stop the capture. And uh, Zalox is gonna retreat. Wow, they are in full retreat mode right now, having lost three players, including both of their scouts. They do not want to get flanked, so it's a pretty solid idea to just jump back before the opposing team can respond. But now the opposing team is responding. Bathtub mannequin down here, and Zalox is just gonna start laying down a sticky trap. His entire team rushing all the way back to last after winning that mid so decisively. Sometimes these things just happen. They have downpour now on a sniper. We'll see how this works out on defense. It's a, it's a pretty solid sniper map, gotta say. Uh, and so let's let's go over the team rosters real quick. We have gone over Runaway 5 before, but if you didn't watch that, then you need to listen to it now. Uh, they're Medic, and by the way, I got this wrong last time. Loki is Overseer. Same person. You can go check that out on the ESCA site yourself if you don't believe me. But why wouldn't you believe me? Come on, man. You're watching my videos. When have I ever lied to you? Except, like, all the time. Because I'm wrong about lots of stuff. But uh, anyway, the Uber's coming in, so I guess we should shut up about that for a minute. As the counter Uber's popped, and it looks like this demo man is just kind of hanging out. Didn't really know what to do there. Or maybe he was trying to set a sticky trap beneath his feet and use it to jump away while he was still Ubered. I don't know, but he did have some pretty good pills there, and in fact, this is going to be a win. That was a... Uh, oh, <laughs> nice, nice pill there. I know that wasn't a pill. That was a sticky bomb. Nonetheless, it looked nice to take down that last scout defending the point. And there you go, Juanetic takes the round. Okay. Let's finish up those roster discussions real quick. Uh, Overseer, the Medic, their two soldiers are... Da I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, Scarlet and Davy. Davy is bathtub mannequin. The two scouts, Maniac and Downpour. Um, and finally, Zalox on the Demo Man. And there's actually two relatively new players, Zalox and uh, I think it's Maniac. Both of them... Yeah, uh, no, I'm sorry, Zalox and Scarlet. This is like their first season of ESEA Open. But the rest of them have been playing, I think, together for a little while longer. Unless, once again, it looks like Juanetic's losing some early players here. They didn't lose their demo yet, so he's going to be spamming those pills down across the point, but they are not hitting anything at the moment. Now Scarlet's down, and there goes Downpour. So neither Scout left... No, wait. Downpour... No, Scarlet was a soldier. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Uh, they do still have one Scout left. 
And Davis thinking maybe he could do the Market Gardener thing, but no, instead he's just going to take a pot shot at that scout who will run away. Uh, Loki, the Overseer, held on to her Uber. And that is going to play, well, it could play a pretty crucial role here as they are kind of unsure about whether to push back in or not. Where's the rest of the Juanetic team? Okay, they are standing on the point now, and they do jump in, force that Uber, and this is going to be a little bit weird for the Runway 5. If they don't get another player or two in here to deal the damage, they might only get one kill out of this entire Uber. There you go, they did bring in their uh, Roman Soldier now. And so both soldiers in are going to be able to deal some damage, but it looks like Juanetic should be able to turn this around. They had almost all their players up. That was a weird Uber, just not a lot of damage coming out of one soldier. Not nearly enough anyway, although uh, Smithers needs to back up just a little bit here. Uh, there is a soldier up there. Bath the mannequin could jump down with an equalizer at any time. Where is he? Where is that guy? Oh, okay, he's, he's hanging out behind. The scout takes him down. Nice kill. All right. So, yeah. Uh, for instance, I wanted to say that the Overseer and Downpour, those two players had been on the Immortal Six a couple seasons ago. And I think we cast a couple of their games even. So, pretty solid. They have uh, some teamwork, some experience playing with each other. But I tell you what, if you want to talk about an experienced team, let's talk about Juanetic Gaming a little bit. If you don't recognize all those names, you can be forgiven. Uh, I actually haven't casted like most of these players in a game before, but most of them have been playing since, let's see, at least Season 6. Uh, Davis and Felon in particular, or Felon, I'm sorry, Felon. Felon have been playing since Season 3 of ESEA. They have a long and star-studded history playing in Invite, and so they're probably off-classing, or maybe they're just completely out of practice, but... Uh, they are doing quite well this season in ESEA Open. Both these teams have pretty decent records, although I didn't actually take down Runaway 5's record. Uh, you know what? I could do that. Okay, they are 10-1. and one. The Runaway 5, 10 wins, 1 loss this season. And actually, Juanetic, 9-2. and two. So, despite the, uh, the experience difference, it looks like Runaway 5, actually, on paper, might be the better team. Although, right now, of course, Juanetic is winning. Uh... At the moment, oh, a nice prediction sticky by Zalox, though, so uh, being a new demo man, oh, apparently not a disadvantage at all. Maybe it's just that beginner's luck or something, who knows. They've got to watch out for JH on the sniper, and uh, JH himself got some pretty awesome history. He's played on open and intermediate teams. He was on Treason a couple seasons ago, and has been playing since Season 7. Meanwhile, uh, the rest of his team, let's see, Bathtub, no, I'm sorry, not Bathtub, what am I talking about? Anyway, Jay, a decent sniper, and I'm wondering if he's the same person. No, probably not. Never mind. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I've seen him in Pug NA before, but it's possible that I totally haven't, because I might be thinking of JB, Java Benaducci. Anyway, an Uber Heavy here on CP Process. ESEA Open is always so much fun. But this Heavy's got to watch out for those sticky bombs getting placed right next to him. Very difficult to dodge those effectively, unless he's got his teammates helping him out. And he does right now. Maniac going to come in and try and finish off Drood, but it turns out that is going to be Davy's job. The bathtub mannequin pulls out his shotgun and uh, tells Drood, Later, dog, you are going to be respawning in another eight seconds. Which is not a fun situation. Davis actually on the spy. Oh, no, you know what? We've totally casted Davis before. And you know why we've casted Davis before? Because he was on the wolf pack. And let me tell you about Davis, my friend. Okay, he's uh, he's pretty hilarious. Although I haven't seen any like text binds from him recently. Oh no, you know what? There you go. Go back to grooming your neck. Okay, good. All right, this is the same Davis. Uh, it must be because I have no. Wait, I don't even know if I've turned them off anymore. But we have seen him play Spy before, and his Spy picks have been nothing short of stellar. Uh, he's done some wicked stuff, just like sidestabbing medics while they are walking through narrowest of chokes, and he like sneaks around behind them. But anyway, the Uber is already in from the blue team. He's going to go for the, the heavy here, which is a pretty wise choice. Uh, does take down that immediate wall of HP on defense. He's got to watch out, though. Now the medic is on him, and actually, oh no, does not manage to Uber saw him at all. Instead, his uh, medic comes in, saves his butt from that that crazy deranged medic with his needle, her needles. I guess it should be a her needles. And uh, Davis, using that ambassador to headshot a scout. Not an easy task to do, but I tell you what, he makes Stabby look like a noob. I'm just kidding. I don't even know who would win, but I'm in a fight. A spy fight between Davis and Stabby. It would be hilarious. And you know, I don't think MGE even allows spies, which is kind of a pain, because I really kind of want to, like, put $50 down for a show match between the two of them right now. Every single bind allowed. Davis, though, still on the spy, and they have not been able to take him down yet, so uh, wherever he decloaks, using his cloak and dagger, I mean, he can go anywhere he wants to right now, just as long as he doesn't get spotted. 
Soldier barely missing his opportunity, and Davis is going to... Oh, he's got to be careful. Okay. The control point is being captured. Going for the headshots from long range. Not an easy task, and he does end up missing all those. So, I mean, at this point, Runaway 5 know there's a spy around. They haven't really been spy-checking that much, though. And part of the problem is that, I mean, Davis is using uh, the Cloak and Dagger. So they, you know, they just don't... They can spam through the choke points, but, you know, it's not like you're going to spam around the ground all the time everywhere because you just run out of ammo really fast. So... Not an easy spy to take out. The the one plus side is that they've got a long time before he can manage to creep his way up behind them. There you go. He's going to try and rely on his disguise now as the Uber is popped there for Overseer. They do manage to take out JH, and we're just sticking on the spy cam because I really want to see this happen. The control point is being wow, and he is, he is making sure he cloaks everywhere. Just does not want to even be spotted because he knows as soon as he is spotted that it is curtains. Wow, and there you go, the uh, entire blue team taking a bit of spam, so they are backing off the point, which actually gives Davis a huge opportunity to get behind the medic. He's going to go for it, but then gets spotted by a soldier. Now he's in some trouble here as the blue team know he's back there, and that's going to shut him down. He's actually not being very useful to his team right now. His team is down by one soldier, and that is giving the Runaway 5 an opportunity to push onto this point. Look at this. This is the problem with Cloak and Dagger, is that uh, if you can't get the kick... Uh, get the kicks? Get, get your kicks on Route 66. If you can't get the kills quickly enough, then you end up getting caught out behind, and look at that scout up there. That was kind of kind of silly. I didn't know that was a thing you could do, but apparently it is. You can stand on that little ledge right there. Cool. Anyway, incoming heavy on defense once again, and that is really just there kind of as a wall of HP. Uh, if they don't take him down, of course, they'll do a lot of damage, but if, you know, if any team worth their salt, it's going to be Runaway 5. They will try and knock out this heavy first. It's actually, they didn't take him down, though. They just pushed everybody off the point and jumped on it. So, uh, Runaway 5 ran away with that point. Oh, no. Don't even start. Sorry. I won't do it again. I'll probably do it again. But, yeah, it is now tied 1-1. to 18.07 remaining in this half. And there you go, the equalizer rollout working just fine. Felon going to take a nice big buff. Going to jump on in, using his uh, years of invite experience to not die, actually. 14 health left, but he's bluffing himself like a boss, just walking straight forward into the Runway 5 team. He does finally die to a stray rocket from Scarlet and Zalox, which I swear that's got to be some kind of medication. If you know, if you take Zalox and it is nothing embarrassing, like, like it's not for anal fissures or something, then you can tell us in the comments. Or if you're not embarrassed by anal fissures, I mean, go for it. Just just tell us what it's for. I really want it to be for that now. <laughs> wow, what is happening here, though? Runaway 5, jumping into the point. Ah, uh, there is a scout who's going to try and sneak around and flank, but he's kind of missed his opportunity, and there you go. He does get taken down by Zalox. Oh, nice kill by Droog, though, jumping in. Oh, no, not even jumping in. I think there was a sticky trap there, possibly. But now Droog is down as well, to get taken down by Downpour. There is an Uber popped for the blue team, and they are going to desperately try and take this midpoint. Runaway 5, uh, they walked out there. I'm kind of surprised, considering that... Yeah, no, we, we heard you the first time there, Davey. Um, anyway, I'm kind of surprised that Juanek didn't try to make a play for mid there after it seemed to me like they won the mid-fight, but maybe I'm just totally wrong, because... Uh, turns out Runaway 5 had the players in position, so it worked out for him. Anyway, they have lost their medic now, so this uh, this demo man is screaming in futility. And Bath of Mannequin, you notice he actually skipped over that health kit over there. Two reasons for that, I'm thinking. Two reasons. First, that he knew it would actually slow him down just a little bit uh, if he used the equalizer. Of course, it would have gotten him above 50 health, and so he would not have had that full speed buff. Second, he kind of wanted to leave it there for his demo man, Zalox. Pretty useful thing to do, so he could uh, run his fast little equalizer legs over to uh, the, the bigger kit and leave the smaller one, the closer one, for the demo man. Pretty sure that was what was going through his head. If not, he can correct me himself. I would appreciate it. Oh, Scarlet using the sewer is not a, not a very common thing to do, but a nice thing to do there. Very good uh, flanking opportunity presented itself, and so he did force the Uber out of Smithers. And Smithers, aside from uh, working as the assistant to the CEO of a nuclear power plant, has been playing for quite a long time himself, played Season 6, and then played from Season 8 onwards. He didn't play in Season 7 for some reason. Apparently that was the season where everybody just decided to uh, to go do something else. But he did play 8 through 11. He's been an intermediate and open. <laughs> and Davis, 
with his YouTube comment bind. I'm pretty sure those are YouTube comment binds. That's what I've heard, is that he just grabs YouTube comments and, uh, and writes them all down. And it seems like they change every game, too, which maybe not every game, but that is just, it's just so wonderful to see somebody trawling through the internet comments on YouTube to find the very best for your perusal. And let's see, where is Downpour right now? Downpour is sniping from... Well, actually, pretty far away from spawn, so he's trying to get forward here. Looks quite cozy in that scarf, doesn't he? Scarf and bandana and that, that soft Bill's hat. So plush. He's got to be feeling good. Oh, he's going to wait for the push to come in. He does spot a couple players. Takes a lot of damage from those rockets, so you got to be careful as a sniper. Because once you're spotted out, you are going to get spammed very quickly. Uh, he is just going to hit the cabinet and get himself healed up. J.H. actually took a lot of damage there from something. Didn't even get to catch it. And downpour missed a shot. Kind of whiffed it there. So now, of course, red team knows where he is. They're going to try and sneak themselves in. That's uh, that's actually kind of an interesting decision. Why would they run in the wrong side? Because if you know where the sniper is, normally you try and rotate around and, and get right on his ass. But that is not what happened at all. And now, one at a gaming, having to back away. That, look at that expertly placed stickies, though. The two down over there. They're probably not going to matter, but... He really aimed those right at the edge. Okay, so yeah, they didn't matter. But that was still pretty cool. Bat the mannequin taking a high ground perch, but he has to run away pretty quickly. And look at all the damage coming down on the Runaway 5 team. They haven't lost any players yet, and have killed Droog and JH. Uh, but they are going to have to get healed up, playing from a health disadvantage. Not a good situation to be in. Kaboom! And now Juanetic's in some trouble. They do have to pop the Uber to try and save this point. And that is kind of what the Runaway 5 want, but they need to back away very quickly into their last and then try and reinitiate a push without losing too many players, because if they lose too many players, then what's going to happen? Uh, they're just going to lose the last point. It is three versus four right now, although not everybody from Quanetic is in position to push. Most of them are. They just need to get in there quickly before the uh, respawns come in, and there you go, they are. Zalox holds down the point, but there's a lot of time on it. Uh, <laughs> wow, Davis. Uh, I cannot keep a straight face with this guy. Yeah, no, there's a lot of time on the point right now, so Runaway 5 need to... Yeah, exactly. Lay those stickies down on there. Do not let anything happen. And we're just going to go through the wall here because something is happening. The Uber has been popped. A lot of players for Juanetic dying. Overseer you're going to find the rest of your team and start healing up again, building that Uber because Smithers is down, so there is going to be a bit of an advantage. The problem is that uh, Runaway 5 needs to quickly... Oh, ouch. Need to quickly get over to the point. And they have not been able to do that. So Davis on the sniper actually kind of shutting things down. Uh, you did see Overseer there kind of spinning the mouse around while jumping. And I guess that's because it moves the medic's head and the hitbox around it just enough that it's harder to uh, get that headshot as a sniper. So when you are jumping, spin your mouse around in circles, I guess. Pretty useful thing to do. But there you go, Runaway Five losing almost all their players, and I am losing almost all of my enunciation. Scarlet's going to try and jump in and stop this cap, but I think it's going to be too late. Oh, getting flanked there, and that's just what happens when there's too many players on the field for you to handle at once. Um, pretty much it's just Davey left alive, and he's going to jump in and try to stop this. Gets a kill out of it, but it does not matter. One a dick. It was up two to one. So let's watch this Droog roll out. Let's see what a CP process from a former invite player looks like. See, did I say did I say the word rollout in that sentence? If I didn't, I'm saying it now. I want to see the rollout. Ooh, excuse me. And he's going to take his first shot right over the top. He probably practiced landing those stickies right there. And what is going on with my iPod? It's all like voice control. Why is voice control turned on? I don't know. Hey, iPod, play a song. It's not doing a thing. Whatever. Maybe, maybe I'll figure it out eventually. But anyway, JH getting a nice kill there. Uh, I was totally not watching the screen because my iPod distracted me. But, you know, that's all right. Um, it actually looks like it might be trying to play a song. I don't know. It's pretty cute. I didn't realize that feature was activated, but apparently it is. Maybe somebody hacked my iPhone and they're listening into my uh, my shoutcast before anybody else can. Pretty sure that's what's happening. You still shouldn't not have no heart. Not fight, not compete. Hmm. What? <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I'm just going to leave the uh, the interpretation of all of these comments to you. Nate Rivers taking some damage here, and Nate actually uh, is one of the least experienced members of this team, believe it or not. We've cast his game before, uh, especially on the Princeton Plainsboro team, 
but he has pretty much only played an ESEA Open, so one of the few players who has done that, but he's getting his kills in right now. This soldier just cannot deal with him. Finally, Bathtub Mannequin, Davey, takes him down. But the Runaway Five are going to recapture the middle point after having given it up. And pretty soon they're going to have an Uber as well, so they are going to push in with Davey, who seems to be playing the pocket most of the time, I think. Danke Shane indeed, Medic because Davey's going to try and take a, a wicked little jump over here and flank this medic, give him a little bit of a surprise. The uber is forced, though, so he was uh, not sure why he took his eyes off the prize there, but he did not manage to take down that demo man, which kind of sucks, so he's gone. <laughs> David, stop it! I'm trying to make a cast here, man. Oh... Runway 5 did lose one player, so they're not going to be able to push in right away, but they weren't going to anyway, as the Uber is out. A nice aggressive Uber pop here from Juanetic. They just have to watch out for a back cap, and so far it looks like they are trying to keep track of where the blue team is. Okay, iPod. Play Spoxbeard. Okay, it's it's not it's not working. Alright. If, if you if you like Spoxbeard, though, I want to see a comment. Uh, and also, I want to see where I can digitally download all of their stuff and pay for it, because I have tried Amazon, I have tried iTunes, and it seems like most of their albums, you just have to buy a CD. Do not like. Because I just, I just want it in my music library on the computer. I want to download all that stuff. But I want to pay for it, because I like the band, you know? Anyway, um, yes, Spock's band is a real beard. Shut up. Uh, what did I just say? Well, I'm going to chalk it up to being, like, tired. So I just flew in from Portland last night at, like, 2 in the morning. That's when I got home, and then I uh, had to be at work at 7, so that was pretty sweet. <laughs> yes, I know what I said, though, and uh, I, I just couldn't stop myself from saying it, so we're just going to leave it at that. Anyway, the Uber is out right now. Davis actually having to retreat a little bit, but that's kind of what you want to do as a roaming soldier when your Uber is popped. You don't want to just take a lot of damage and take any of the Uber flash. You want to leave it to your pocket if you possibly can, unless there's a really good opportunity to jump in and uh, work with the pocket and just deal crazy amounts of damage to their entire team. So Davis did the wise thing there, backing out. It was kind of a boring thing for him, but he knew what he was doing. And now Felon playing that pocket soldier with the medic here, which is Smithers. Felon hanging out back here, and they're just going to wait. They're trying to build this Uber as fast as possible, so Felon's going to... Oh, you know what? It's actually... Yep, it's it's definitely playing something. Can you hear it? <laughs> it's not Spoxbeard, though. That's, that's the Flower Kings. Yeah, it's the Flower Kings. All right, iPod. Well, that's getting annoying as hell, so uh, we are just going to turn that volume all the way down because I know it's going to start trying to play stuff again, but uh, whatever. Oh, no. I just said play stuff. It's probably going to start trying to play a song called Stuff. Yeah, the voice control thing came back up, everybody. Anyway, uh, we are hanging out a little bit here as Smithers is hiding behind a rock. He actually told me that there were a couple times in this game where that might happen. Players hiding behind rocks. But uh, in that case, we may just speed it up a little bit. And here comes the push now uh, with Felon trying to stop this scout from forcing the Uber, but it is forced. Scarlet down, though, and this scout actually gets taken out as well. So trading two players just to pop an Uber, not always the best of choices. Xanox is going to back away for a little bit here and start laying down some uh, spam. And so they will be able to probably hold on to the middle point. But they do get their Uber forced in kind of a weird position. They are behind these crates, need to push forward with it. And actually, they lose downpour there. Nice kill by JH, which means that uh, the Runaway 5 really are just going to be in full runaway mode in a second here. They're probably going to have to retreat as they have not gotten any kills off of that poorly timed Uber of theirs that uh, was forced out by... Was it a scout? Maybe? Possibly? Forced out by spam. A lot of nice stuff coming in. So that was a really well-done push, even though their Uber was forced a little bit early and they weren't able to... Uh, well, they were able to stop the push onto their second point and then just walk right on the mid said, you know what, we're going to we're gonna be aggressive. And Runaway 5 said, wait a minute, no. Let's not be aggressive at all. And you can see how that worked out. Nice sticky traps here. I wonder if anybody will catch those. I, I would think someone would, but you know, it kind of blends in with a little blood mark there. We will see. We will see. Although, actually, that blood mark probably does not show up for most of these players, as they're probably running, like, high frames config. I don't know. Plus, you don't normally push out of your second into mid um, just because you don't 
get a lot of advantage from doing that. So it looks like the Runaway Five really are trying to hang around and wait for Juanetic to push into them, because that gives Juanetic a severe disadvantage. But you, you see how it is. It's like both teams are going to be playing this defense game for a little while here. And down board, just hanging out on top of the fence, which one of my favorite pastimes, you know. Pull out a pistol, hang out on top of the fence. Take a couple shots at a time, and then reload the entire clip. Because that is a thing that happens in the real world all the time. I think JH is just kind of... <laughs> yeah, these two are spitting at each other from long range. Just having some fun. So we actually might have to uh, speed it up again here. Yep, got some size coming out of Davy, so we're going to speed it up. Whoa, super fast. Looks like there's a little bit of damage going down. Lag is why we're not pushing, so... <laughs> okay. Apparently some players experiencing some difficulties with their computers. Which is just unheard of. Honestly, uh, nobody ever has lag in this game. And if you have lag, you are lying. By the way, I, w I totally want that to be my... Uh, my like little intro segment to uh, not that I really want intro segments to a video other than what I already do but if I had one I would just want it to be the, the soldier yelling out like come here Sally because I think it's hilarious downpour on the sniper now he actually had the time to go switch out and he is in his cozy little scarf once again he is just the cutest little guy at the ball going for the shot there on Davis and Davis did you see that spin move he had right there did a little twirl in midair looks like we do have some ballerinas in this game but it did save his life. He would have gotten his head shot off otherwise. So uh, apparently that is a thing that works very well. Jump and spin. Jump and spin. A ballet will save your life if you ever have to fight in a war. Anyway, uh, Felon and Drew both down actually, jumping in. Not sure whether they were just bored or what they were doing, but uh, they have given an opportunity to the Runway 5 to push in. Pushing with a sniper, not an easy thing to do because you lose a lot of mobility. And that sniper is going to take a little while to get into a good position. He's trying to spot that soldier now, but not able to not able to knock him out of the air. And there is a back cap going on, so downpour immediately going to try and start this cap on mid. While maybe somebody goes back and stops that, but here comes an Uber. And I don't think downpour exactly realized it, or maybe he was lagging. So he took a little bit, of, little bit of uh, time away from the invading team. But it looks like Quanetic is actually going to start capping again. They have, in fact, the, the uh, back cap worked really well. Drew does get taken down, so this combo here of Overseer and Davy. Working decently well. Uh, sounds like, yeah, Smithers is in some trouble. Kaboom! That is a lot of blood. A little bit of guts. Jibs. Gibbs. Is it Gibbs or Jibs? You tell me, because I don't know. And there you go, Runaway 5 recaptured their second point. Uh, pretty much thanks to some good work by the combo, and there's there's some, uh, some help on the flank there as well. But the aggression by... The Juanita Gaming team just did not really pay off very well there. And once again, JH jumping in, trying to get the kill on the... Or at least the force pop on the medic, and that's not working. Wow, I like that Davey spotted that trap out, too. Uh, I don't know if maybe somebody called it out to him before, but looking for that kind of thing is what separates the boys from the men in, uh, in pocket soldiering especially. Trying to make sure that your medic stays alive and that you don't lead him or her into a sticky trap and just utter doom. So there goes the Uber which is pretty darn well timed if I say so myself, but look at the retreat from Juanetic. They are all out of there right away. They lost their demo, and that is it. Now, since they've lost their demo, though, I would expect to see Runaway 5 try and push right away. They do not have to worry about sticky traps through these doors, so they could make a clean entry, and making a clean entry is super important. However, it might not matter if you're trying to jump at a heavy, unless they are getting some good time down on this point, and the, even the medic jumping in. Wow, this is going really well for the Runaway 5, and they do capture it. Wow, that was a... Uh, quite impressive little round there. And how much time is actually left in the map? Well, we will find out in just a second. It's going to tell us, because it's ESEA. We don't get to check ourselves. There you go. There are 54 seconds remaining in this half, so I have already been casting for almost half an hour. Of course, not counting the time that we sped up time just a little bit, because I am a time wizard. But pretty soon this is going to be over, so unless one team just completely steamrolls mid, we are probably going to see 2-2 two to two going into the half. Not very often you see that in ESEA, but oh! Boom. And it looks like this might have been a bit steamrolly as... There you go. With Smitters, the only one left alive. 35% Uber. But there may not be enough time left. So the Demo's going to try and jump this right away. Soldier going to stand there on the point and start capturing that as soon as he possibly can. Demo actually going to try and lay down some sticky traps at the doors. It might be able to work, but it might be a little bit too late. And the Demo is actually going to take a lot of damage here. Uh, this isn't going to work at all, actually. They are just a little bit too far forward with no scouts or anything to help them. 
so the second point is capped by runway 5, but it's going to take a miracle to cap last in the next uh, two seconds. Nope, not going to happen. So we're going to go on to that second half. This has been a fairly exciting game so far. And uh, <laughs> pubbers are... Come on, man. I'm a pubber. I mean, I'm bad, and it's funny because I'm bad, but I'm still, you know... Pubbers gotta gotta stick together, gotta represent just a little bit. Anyway, Droog gonna jump in here and once again take that uh, immediate rollout. Didn't get to see where the first sticky landed. In fact, we do get to see it was actually a little bit early for the rest of the R5 team. They did not get in position in time for that stick to matter. Whoa, that was gross. Sorry about that. Had myself some Chick Fil A today. Delicious, utterly delicious. So you got to hear that coming back up. Uh, and JH standing up on the high ground, not able to take a lot of spam from up there, so quite a nice position to be in. Now he is going to jump in, go for the kill. He smells blood in the water, and apparently it's his own. Oh, darn. Anyway, Juanetic in kind of a bad position here. They will get their Uber just in time to save Smithers. But the problem is, I mean, what do you do now? Why are you jumping in? Well, they actually, that was a free Uber because Loki was down. Plus, Droog did get killed on Scarlet, so nicely done. They are actually going to win mid for some reason. And Felon going to jump back in to catch up with the medic. I am never going to mispronounce that again. Felon. What a jerk. I mean myself, not this guy. This guy's cool. With his pink tyrant's helm and his angry face. Alright, so Felon going to jump in here when he's probably fully buffed up, but Davis might jump first? No, sides against that. Normally when you see the roamer, Davis in this case, get buffed up to 300 health, that is when you should probably start watching him. I'm watching for the kill feed for him to do something big. But uh, sometimes you just buff up that roamer and he's just like, oh, nah, it's not, it's not the right time. Only he doesn't say it, because usually roamers are notoriously quiet players. Uh, you'll hear from, like, Wonderwall and Mackie and even Dave AC. Mackie was loud when he wanted to be, but, like, they wouldn't communicate always with the team. They'd just, you know, jump in and get some kills. And if, if the rest of their team wasn't watching the kill feed, then they wouldn't know the medic had just died. They'd just be like, oh, wait, Wonderwall, what were you doing? Oh, he just killed, like, three people. Oh, crap. So anyway, let's, uh, we should probably be watching the roamers, because at this point, that's who we need to watch. They are going to be the playmakers you would think, unless one team gets bored and just pushes in with an Uber, but that is going to be a silly move. So you are going to kind of sacrifice one soldier uh, and see if you can get a kill or two. Nice shots on downboard, so actually that is a good kill. And just the one kill is probably all uh, all Homonetic needs to move in. Snaking those rockets in there. Dave is doing a pretty good job of just trying to spam a little bit, but the Uber is popped first for Juanetic. Now Davis is going to try and sneak around behind, but he's not sneaking anymore. Looks like they know where he is. JH down, but that is both scouts now down for Runaway 5. They do have downpour just respawning, but Davis is going to be in a good position to take an air shot and then die. Uh, but he did jump in and get some good damage, taking down Scarlet. And Loki, a.k.a. Overseer, is down. So that means that... Juanetic is in a pretty good position here as long as they don't lose Droog and Smithers. And so far, they have not taken any sort of uh, flanking damage or spam damage or anything. So, well, a tiny bit of spam damage from those pistols, but nothing that Smithers can't use his natural medic regen to heal up back up to full 150 health. So Juanetic holding on to the midpoint here on process means that they are in a prime position to push forward with an uber advantage pretty soon. It's not going to be as big as they could have had because uh, they didn't want to try and build an Uber when it was just the two of them. You know, if, if it's just you and a demo man, building an Uber is not as important as that demo man trying to sticky trap up all the doorways that enemies could come in. Because if he's not doing that, and if he doesn't have a full rack of sticky bombs, then defending your medic is just impossible. So they wanted him to stay reloaded and maybe set up some traps there instead of building. That's the wise choice. But now they are jumping in. Overseer with 90% Uber. No, going to go down. And so uh, that is going to be a nice textbook push for Juanetic pretty soon, I would think. Felon actually not quite textbook there, unless the textbook involves, you know, shooting rockets at yourself instead of the scouts coming at you. Ugh! Just shot into the ground. But that was uh, was Maniac. He is the only player left alive for his team at the moment. Overseer just respawned and will not have anybody to heal up. So Smithers is using all of this time. It is golden. He's going to be uh, building that Uber. And finally, Overseer says, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't just walk out there for myself and try to defend it. As cool as that would be for a frag clip, um, the odds are not in your favor. Not even when you're wearing swag like that. 
And there you go, they do have a heavy out here now. They've also got an engineer, so they are really prepared to turtle a little bit here. Where is downpour, though? There he is. Gonna probably set up the uh, sentry well. A little bit further forward than I have seen it get set up before. Uh, Overseer took a bit of damage there from some spam, but nothing that can't get healed up very quickly. And there you go, that sentry not even getting past level 1. It did shoot the Uber back just a little bit and took some of their attention, but now, of course, Downpour has swapped back over to Scout. Uh, they are going to try their best to defend this, and so far it might be working, but they've lost three players so far, so actually, no, probably not. It would, it would be pretty crazy if they could, but no, that's Juanetic taking the round. So it is now 3-2 to two in favor of our ex-invite team, Juanetic Gaming. I'm not sure how much those guys have actually played with each other, though. I know a few of them probably have, but I don't know from which teams or which seasons. I, Davis, this is not a family-friendly video anymore. Not that it ever was, but oh man. So Scarlet taking a nice jump route in there, but actually taking a lot of damage, so you got to be really careful about that. And there he goes, taken out. So in comes the counter jump from Juanetic Gaming, and there you go. They are getting very aggressive now that they know their opponents do not have a lot of players left. They have to keep the scout away from the med, and he's doing some pretty good jumping himself. Takes down Smithers. Maniac with the pistol. And uh, actually, that was on the news the other day, a maniac with a pistol. Maybe we shouldn't go there, because... Mm, mm. You know, I just realized I might actually be missing the, uh, the UGC Highlander All-Stars game. Oh, no. Well, I'll catch the rest of it as soon as I am done casting this, because I cannot stop casting this game now. It's a pretty good one. Uh, and it does look like Smithers just trying to take a forward spawn here. The control point is being but would not be able to catch up with the rest of his team in time. So if I were R5 and I saw that there was no medic out here, I would definitely jump this in. And that's what they're doing right now. Taking down JH and Nate Rivers right away. Both the scouts gone. And there goes a soldier as well from Scarlet's... Well, actually from Bathtub Mannequin. So out of curiosity, I do want to ask... Davey, a.k.a. Bathtub Mannequin. Is that like a mannequin of a bathtub? Where you just, like, you display all the different, you know, bath mats that you can put in it? Put, put, put your bathtub mannequin in front of the bath mat store? Or is that more like putting a mannequin of a person in a bathtub and then just, like, showcasing it having a bath? Which is it? And if it's something, if it's something weirder, I still want to know. I really do. Anyway, Uber coming in right away, so this is an interesting move by R5. They are going to force the pop immediately out of blue, though, which is uh, exactly what they wanted to do. And now backing out until that Uber is gone. They have not taken any casualties so far, which is kind of how they want it. Scarlet taking a bit of damage here, though, and is as is one of their scouts as well. Wow, nice work by Droog, but Zalox is in to try and finish the job. Not able to get the damage down on this medic just yet, and he's not reloaded anymore, so that was just a little bit too aggressive by the Runaway 5 team, and that means that, yeah, look at this, oh, complete wipeout for Runaway 5. Um, they probably could have saved their med and demo. I didn't see how their med died, but the demo definitely could have been saved there if he hadn't really gotten tunnel vision on that medic. He was really wanting that kill, and uh, just jumped in a little bit too aggressively. Got shut down for it because he was not reloaded at all. Downpour is in the spies, so we're trying to find that, and he is using the Cloak and Dagger just like Davis was, so we'll have to see if he can't be as successful. Davis, as you recall, got a kill on the heavy. Downpour is just... Wow! Uh, okay! Would have thought the spam would have just destroyed him there, but he didn't take any damage at all. And so we'll see what kind of kill he goes for here. Smithers would be the prime target, but it's going to be very difficult to find a spot to decloak where nobody's going to spot him. And... Wow! <laughs> oh man, those scouts could have run into him at any time. Uh, he should be able to get away with the cloaking, but the problem is now, look at this, the cloak and dagger is going to give him some problems because Smithers is already gone. So he will have to decloak here. Sneak around behind, he does spot, oh, he's found the med, gets the kill, not going to probably get any others, but that is all he needed. The med drops the uber to the spy, completely unexpecting. And so trading a spy for a medic, I'll do it every time. And there you go, Runaway 5 now in a prime position to push. They've taken down three enemy players and a giant sticky trap from Droog. Taking down Bathtub, Mannequin, Zalox, uh, Loki, the only player left now. And we will see who tries to get to her first. The control point is being uh, I think she might have actually gotten back into spawn. Pretty close, pretty close. Using that overdose may have saved her life a little bit. As uh, with a full 100% Uber, the overdose's effect is maximized. You get that full 10% speed buff when you have it out, and you did see that she had just put it away when she got back here, so pretty awesome. 
how to get in touch with who gives strangers babies at adoption. Oh, um, well, you know, Davis, maybe instead of copying that uh, YouTube comment, you could have tried to explain to that poor hapless person who only wanted to give her baby up for adoption. I don't know. Sounds pretty awful. Um, right away, three players, including the demo man down. Davis was on the sniper. Didn't really... I don't think he got any picks there as well. Maybe Scarlet. I don't know who killed Scarlet, but... Uh, sounds like a murder mystery. Who killed Scarlet? Like a very bad murder mystery written by a five-year-old who just watched a bunch of TF2 and doesn't know how to use logs. <laughs> That's all I can say. Druga knows his jumps, though, and he is going to be sneaking in here for some damage. Forces the pop out of the Runaway 5, along with his partner in crime there, the soldier who took most of that Uber. And there you go. The Ubers are both over now, so now we get to see who is in a better position coming out of this. Looks like it is going to be Runaway 5. They've got to watch for the flanking action here from the Roamer and this Scout, but so far no kills, and the Scout goes down. So, three down right now for Juanetic, and they're still pushing in. They actually do a lot of good damage with Droog, uh, but now they are backed up with two Scouts to deal with, and this is what you got to do as a medic, actually. Wow, what? 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> look at that skill. Davis trying to uh, trying to give his own teammate some shit, but you know what? Droog is not going to have it. Uh, Droog pretty much is just like, nope, I know what I'm doing. Sticky bomb. I, it is not every day that you can take on, even when you've got a medic behind you, that you can take on two scouts at a time as a demo man and get them both killed. So, Droog, you know, for all the crap Davis gives you, you're an alright demo man in my books. He probably doesn't need the encouragement. But you know what? He is. Anyway, Felon going to lead his med probably pretty soon out here, and they are going to try and jump this in right away. Wow, nice shots there on that soldier, taking Scarlet down to 91 health. He's now down to 72 over on the flank. He's going to have to be careful. He is behind enemy lines right now and going actually just for the back cap. Interesting choice, because I don't think he's going to be able to get away with it unless the Runaway 5 can stop this capture. I know they will not. So Scarlet immediately takes a nice series of jumps here, jumps in and tries to get the kill. Ends up getting shot into the ground by Felon, but uh, that was a good attempt. It's just that, of course, Juanetic knew there was a soldier behind them. They knew the back cap attempt was happening. So they knew what to watch out for. And we've got a nice little 60 FPS moment going on here, which is always fun. I do enjoy watching uh, a higher frame rate than 30 whenever I can. And Smith is just trying to build up the Uber, so they are not going to push in until they have that. You can guarantee it, because Downpour is on the uh, Engineer, Scarlet on the Heavy. They will you know, probably try to spam just a little bit, but they don't want to lose any players because they're getting close to the Uber now. They probably just want to make a nice little coordinated Uber push. Downpour has set up a sentry, but it sounds like it's only at level 1, and he is um, beating the wall instead of... Where's the... Where's the sentry? Why doesn't he want to make it, like, level... Oh, you know what? He's probably thinking it's hidden there. So he's not putting... Uh, he's not attacking the sentry directly. There, he's going to go do it now. I don't know. I, I, I think maybe he didn't want to do that because he didn't want anybody to see where it was. So he's trying to keep the sentry's location kind of a secret, and that is why he was just walking around behind pillars and uh, and banging on things randomly. Yeah, that is exa I think that's exactly what he's doing. I think he's trying to pretend his sentry is somewhere where it's not. And he may be actually drawing some spam in the wrong direction. Not that the spam matters so much, but if... Uh, you know, if Wanetic doesn't know where this is, uh, then it doesn't matter if their dog is smarter and smells better than the enemy team, because uh, they're going to have to deal with that sentry, and that is not going to be an easy task. Plus, there's going to be a heavy over here, fully overhealed, on the high ground, able to jump behind into this little uh, this little area. This What are we going to call this? Bunker? We're going to call it a bunker. You can jump into the bunker whenever you want to. And, wow, i um, surprised at the unwillingness of this team to push. Maybe it's because they don't know where the sentry is, which might actually be a very wise choice. It's like, don't push till you know where the sentry Don't push until you see the whites of the sentry's eyes, which is never, because they don't have eyes, is kind of what uh, what Droog is saying right now to his team. As far as I know, Droog is the caller for his team. That's that's the impression I was given. But who knows? Anyway, still 3 to 2. So if they just want to run the clock down now, why not? it could actually do that and win the game. Uh, it would be a nice long game. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But uh, it, it could. And Maniac now on the sniper. 
So we do have a Prolander team on the red, ladies and gentlemen. By Prolander, I mean one of each class, except that there's only six of them, so they can't have every class. But it is like Highlander, in that there can only be one. Uh, <laughs> David says push, um, which is not something you usually do when you are standing on your own last point. So uh, it looks like they, they will just kind of sit here and stalemate for a little while. <laughs> All right, well, that's CP process for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are just going to whoosh, 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 up. And oops, but that's all right. We didn't miss anything. We missed, like, half a second. But what I wanted to do was this. Whoa! All right. Some spam going down. Not a heck of a lot, though, and we are fast-forwarding past the, uh, the silly spam phase. There you go. Davis does try to jump in, and he is the only one who jumped in. So that does mean that he spots the sentry, didn't do any damage to it, but at least they kind of know where it is now, and they know how to take it out. And Maniac actually getting a little bit far forward. Let me see, where is he right now? Uh, nope. Getting back. Forward, back, forward, back. He's playing the Hokey Pokey with his team, I swear. Uh, he's, he's, if we find himself shaking it all about in just a minute, then, uh, then you'll know. How does he even see through that? That is like an opaque lens. That is not a real lens, Sniper. You can't see through that. Whatever, apparently you can see through it. It's cartoons. doesn't need to be super real, I guess. But you know what? If this was Battlefield 3, you could totally see like his magnified eye upside down through that scope. Because it would be super realistic, competitive combat simulator war-themed stuff with not as many hats. Battlefield! <laughs> Not that I'm ripping on Battlefield at all, because I, I do like the game. Um, but I gotta tell you, TF2 has its own special charm. Doesn't even attempt to be realistic, and I do appreciate that. Anyway, Runaway 5 still sitting back on that last point, and not a lot happening. There is a teleporter up now, and it leads where? Nowhere special. In fact, it's just gonna get shot to death. Well. So we'll hang out for a little bit. Teleporter does go down. <laughs> Droog happy about that. So hang on. Where is, um, do they still have their sniper up? Yeah, it's Davis. So we're just going to watch Davis and see if he can't get a pick. Because eventually that's what's going to matter, right? They're, they're going to get a kill. Somebody's going to get a kill and then push. And it's probably going to be Juanetic. Davis did take a lot of damage there from Maniac, so he will have to grab this health kit. Run back. And peek in again. Sentry does get taken down. Actually, this would be a decent time to try and get in and do some pushing. Plus, uh, Davis did get a, a bit of a headshot off on somebody. Going to go for some more as well. So, yes, here comes the push. And there you go. He takes down Maniac. Now Juanetic is going to be standing on the point. Davis has to retreat, but the rest of his team is still in. And he could come back in and get some more headshots at any time. There is an Uber forced here. And this Uber is just going to be trying to buy some time uh, to deal damage to Juanetic. Juanetic gets some good kills in, though. Wow, and look how close that point is to being captured right now. They do manage to hold it off for just a little while, and they are going to get some more respawns here. Maniac going to come back up on the scout. And he will probably start trying to chase down the enemy team. I would imagine they should have somebody standing on that last point to try and defend from a back cap. And the rest of the team is going to get in. They chase after Davis. Smithers taking a lot of damage, and he is going to be going down in just a second here. Unless his team defends successfully. Bathtub Mannequin goes down. So that is a useful thing. He was going for the medic, very close to getting the kill, but didn't quite get it. Nonetheless, uh, it's only, well, now, it, yeah, it's still, at this point, it's three versus two on this point. And yeah, I know there were some respawns there, but uh, that is a surprising level of play. I, I know a lot of these guys have been an invite before, so they're very good, but it's surprising to see Juanetic just saying, look, there's three of us, there's like three of them, let's push in and win. And they know they had the advantage, so they absolutely we're fully able to do that, and now they've got this uber charge ready to go. They are going to jump in right away, using it to just completely wreck the enemy team. Medic gone. We've got to take down the demo man if they want to keep the stickies off the point, but uh, they shouldn't have much of a problem. And Smithers actually in a nice position up here. It's going to be tough to take him down for a little while, but of course he wasn't healing anybody. And actually, looks like uh, that push did not work out very well. They just didn't do quite enough damage, and what a nice shot there from Zalox on Droog. Glad we got that one on camera. Oh man! He's on a roll right now, just saying, oh, guys, we are going to hold... He actually held the uh, held that point twice. Going to get out here right away and start capping, using that pain train. Oh, there's a scout! Look out! There's a scout! Wow, actually managed to nail him with a pipe, but he is going to be in trouble. JH takes him down and then dies himself to Maniac. Maniac not finished. He's going to try and go for the kill on the scout there. Nope. Has to back away. Even with the overheal, he did not have a heck of a lot of uh, 
potential to stay alive there. No, he's, he's still being a pretty aggressive scout, though. Just got to be very careful when you're being aggressive, because, uh, oh, yep, nobody able to stop him from getting on top of the medic there. But Smithers didn't take a lot of damage, so good dodging from that med. It's going to mean he stays alive. 50% uber compared to the 0% of a dead overseer. So, once again, they're going to have a nice big uber advantage pushing in. They're not even going to use it, though, uh, unless they build up to that uber in the ensuing fight. But I don't think it's going to happen. No, Smith is already down. Druga's is standing upstairs, and so he could try and just lay some sticks down and get some kills here. Nobody's really spotted him yet. I think one scout may have known. Oh, yeah, they, they knew he was up there. Maybe he just thought they didn't know because he saw the demo man with his back turned. But there you go. Wanted it completely wiped out. And once again, the Runaway 5 will have to recapture their second point. This time, maybe they can actually hold it. Possibly. I don't know. That's a tall order. Just kidding. I, I love you guys. So we are going to watch to see how they try to take this mid. They will have an uber advantage, but they are going to push very quickly on that. And Droog already down. Whoa! Overseer gets bombed in, though. Got to look at the sky a little bit more, maybe. Especially when you know you've got that uber advantage. That's one thing that even I've been told, and I forget all the time. But uh, if you've got an uber advantage, you just need to be watching the skies because there is going to be a soldier jumping straight in at you, like, all the time. Especially after they've just respawned and they're all pushing and trying to defend a point. Yeah, so maybe you should have been watching for that. I don't know. But the entire team should have been watching, too, not just Overseer, so that is not solely her fault. And Juanetic recapturing second once again because they managed to take down not just the Medic, but the rest of the Runaway 5 team, and now they could start running away with the game themselves. If they can keep their aggression up, Davis, though, on the sniper means that it might be a bit of a slower push than they had planned. Using the Shah Han Shah, which I'm pretty sure is nowhere close to the actual pronunciation, but closer than I was last time. And their demo's already in. Davis is not, not even able to get a good angle to shoot people with right now because he's too afraid of being pressured himself. And so they lose Drew right away, not getting any kills to show for that Uber. And Loki, a.k.a. Overseer, going to have the Uber up pretty soon. Sorry, I keep saying AKA a lot in this video, but you know what? They tag up as different things, and they change your names all the time, and it is confusing. It's just super confusing. So yeah, this is a problem with running a sniper on offense, is that if he can't get the angles he needs, and the rest of the team is pushing in, what are you going to do? You, know, you just can't do the damage. So Davis, see if he can't get the headshots, goes for the soldier there, and does a good bit of damage to Bathtub Mannequin, but not able to finish him off with that headshot. And he's still just going for body shots right now, so the Uber, Uber is just finishing up for Loki. Just almost ready to go here for Smithers. And Davis not going to be able to get any shots off there at the moment. In fact, he does go down. Maniac finally chased him down and put a stop to his reign of terror. Which I got to tell you, I'm always scared of snipers. Even the bad ones. Even the bad ones get the occasional good shots. Not that I'm saying Davis is bad. But uh, if he was, I'd still be scared. That's the point. Oh, Zalok's trying to do some predictive uh, predictive pipes there. I don't know if that really would have been an air pipe, a true air pipe, but it still would have been a pretty good shot. But he missed it just a little bit, and now Runaway 5 down in the hole. And hang on, did Ponetic actually cap? No, they still haven't, so it is still 3-2. to two. Longest game ever on process? Possibly. Quite possibly. Downpour jumping in to try and stop this cap, and he does kill Davis temporarily, so... And yes, I mean temporarily. It's going to be respawning in just a second. So yeah, good kills coming in from the Runway 5. It means they will hold on to that point for a while longer. A decent decision to go in, and I think Downpour kind of led the charge there. Will now lead this charge as well, trying to draw some of the attention away from the demo. Or maybe the demo is trying to draw attention away from him, so he can just sneak in and meek shot Droog. Good shots there from Downpour, and we will see the Runway 5 capture mid. So this aggression from them is working out actually pretty dang well. Although their aggression has been, I think, a little bit less consistent than Juanetic. The only problem with Juanetic, it seems, is that uh, they tend to wipe out attacking last a lot. And then sometimes they lose too many players. But even when they lose too many players, they're usually still a force to be reckoned with. So the, the main problem they've been having is just they, they cannot seal the deal. They've had so many attempts on the last point. And Dabbor just not taking any damage right now. Dodging Master finally dies there. But he does help Zalox get the kill on Droog. The Uber finally popped here for the blue team, but they have popped on just, like, one person and are now trying desperately to retreat. Uh, Bath of Mannequin going to try and pop these guys up into the air. He did juggle the soldier forward. Got to be careful here, though. This is starting to look like an ulti duo match. 
with Scarlet going down, Bathtub Mannequin probably going to have to retreat. Yes, he will do just that. But there is a backup going on, and so he... Wow, nice. I like that play by Maniac. Maniac uh, snuck in there, saw nobody was defending that point at all. Uh, and in fact, that little ulti-duo battle there using, uh, using Bathtub Mannequin as kind of like a bait to distract the enemy team worked exceptionally well. It is now tied 3-3. Three to three. I don't really know what that was from Downpour. Maybe like a... Well, I don't... Shoot, this is already NSFW. I guess I can say whatever I want, but uh, <laughs> I guess we just won't go there for now. And we are seeing frame rate drop a little bit. I do apologize, but that's just what happens with this computer. Anyway, uh, wow, Drew's going to take a jump in, but he actually jumped straight into a soldier, kind of hit each other in midair there, so Bathtub Mannequin actually saved the rest of his team inadvertently. JH, though, coming in and getting a good, oh, man, a double kill there on Zalox and Maniac, and so it's just Overseer left alive, and she cannot get away. So that was a wipeout. Looks like this should be an easy round for Juanetic. They are capping second right now, and they are already getting in position to spam those doors on last CP process here looking like it is starting to become Juanetic's map. All they have to do is leave one or two players here, cap on the point. Everybody else still invulnerable. Zalox was trying his best, but that is not enough against an invulnerable and uh, almost fully healed enemy team. So it is a very quick round for Juanetic. They are starting to make it look easy, and that is always a scary thing. Let me see the Zalox roll out here. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Malox. That's the medication I'm thinking of. So, I wonder where this guy's name came from. Anyway, uh, Maylox, that's, that's, uh, what was it? Right away, Droog taken down. That's a big deal. You don't want to lose your demo man very early at these mid fights because look at the damage Zalox can pour out here when he is left unchecked. Three, is that three kills for him in that mid fight? Yes, I think it was. And absolutely beast mode right now, Zalox. So, uh, that is a complete wipeout for Team Honetic. The difference is from last round. Loki died as well, so there will not be a huge, gigantic uber advantage that is just insurmountable. But... And I know that there's going to be a soundboard of me one day just saying but like a million times uh, in all these different inflections and voices, but what matters here uh, is who can build uber faster. Loki building exceptionally fast, and there it is, the Kritzkrieg! The first time I think we have seen it all game. So we're going to see uh, Zalox taking these crits in pretty soon, I would imagine. I wonder if one of the gaming is going to be ready for this. They do have a heavy out right now. They do not have an engineer. An engineer would be a perfect counter because uh, crits do not deal any extra damage to buildings. But here comes Uber right away. Oh, and immediately take down Smithers. Perfect crits right now, taking down the heavy as well. That was awesome. So immediately tying it up, runaway five, bringing it four to four. How much time has even left in this half? Can't be that much because my voice is starting to feel it right now. So uh, yeah, there you go, a minute left. <laughs> this is just like last time. We'll see if anybody can finish this game right away, but if not, we are actually going to go into overtime. This might be the first overtime game I've actually cast all season long. This is uh, season 11, by the way, just in case you're wondering. So Zalox starting to lay down some bombs here at the mid, but uh, nobody really dying just yet. There you go, Zalox actually down, and so this could end up being a pretty decent mid fight here for the blue team. They do take a bit of damage, but it's just Maniac left alive, and in fact, he goes down as well. So uh, this could be Juanetic's game. They just need to get these caps quick. And so w watch how Sm um, Smithers heals his team here. It's really going to matter, actually, who he tries to get buffed up first. Uh, they need to get somebody standing on that point. There you go, the soldier is going to do just that. Finally, they do have everybody healed up, and they weren't really pressured, so I guess it doesn't matter too much. But here goes a desperate defense by the Runaway 5. They've got a Heavy. They've got, well, they had an Engineer who changed back over to Soldier, but the uh, Heavy's down right away. That second point not quite finished yet. It is finished now, so if Smithers just starts capping right away here, no, just a little bit too late. So it looks like uh, a minute and four second capture, just a little bit too tough. We are going on to overtime. Overtime. Oh, I want to get that mod. Uh, I think it's actually a server-side mod, but I wonder if you could do it just for STV demos, where the announcer just constantly yells over time and never stops. I think it'd be hilarious. I wouldn't even have to shoutcast. It's just like, what time is it? It's over time. Anyway, uh, Juanetic losing a couple of players here, but actually it's the soldiers down for both teams. So, kind of even. Overseer is a bit ahead in the Uber. It is a crits. So we may end up seeing an early crits here, but they need to spot the medic. Oh, and actually they kind of gave away that they were uh, fully charged there. They called the Uber a little bit early. Smithers is going to know what's up. 
he is going to know. So I'd be very surprised if they yeah, took any damage from that crit. That is not going to happen. And so that gets stopped very quickly. A good swap on the crits, though, to Maniac, who managed to use one crit meat shot to take down that scout from full health to nothing. Absolutely nothing. And so Runaway 5 capture that second. But the problem is they are not going to be able to stop an Uber at all. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going to die. It is definitely going to do that. I was kind of hoping to cast two games tonight, but whatever. What am I doing tomorrow? I'm doing something tomorrow. Something that, like, precludes me from casting any games. What am I doing tomorrow? I don't remember. Runaway 5, losing the second point, though. <laughs> we don't have crits anymore. It's okay, you can't push into us. I like that. Uh, but they do actually still have crits, and the problem here that they have... Well, it's not too much of a problem. They did force the Uber out of Smithers. So even though Juanetica took their second point, they are going to have to be on the lookout for this crits. Coming through once again, Bathtub Mannequin does get uh, get shot, though. And oh, nice little trap there by Davis. He manages to force the crits way early, not dealing nearly enough damage to the enemy team. And so that crit was not very effective at all. Even though Davis died, he was in a perfect position to shut that down. I wonder if he realized... I think he did. I think he was just like, yeah, they're going to come through here with crits. I know it. He's absolutely right. And yes, my chair is squeaky. Apologies. I'm going to try and stop bouncing up and down because this is an exciting game. What can I say? Team Juanetic, though, getting on to the point. They're trying to build this Uber up as quickly as possible so they don't have to deal with another crits Krieg killing their medic like in that last half. And if you just skip to here in the video and you're like, oh, who wins? Well, shame on you for hearing that there was a crits Krieg. But there was, and it was pretty epic, i got to say. Medigun, though, at 100%, so that means the invulnerability will totally cancel out the crits. Uh, three times zero is still zero. And they are actually coming straight in around behind Runaway 5. That should not have worked at all, but it did, and it worked beautifully. Normally, sewer pushes just don't happen all that much, but even Bathtub calling that one out, like, wow, okay, run everybody through the sewers. I, I guess we weren't expecting that. Um... I gotta, I gotta say, if they had, like, one person watching the sewers, that would not have been nearly as nasty and one-sided as it was. But as it is, Team Nasty, Juanetic Gaming, are going to push in, likely for the win here pretty soon. They don't need an Uber at the moment, although they might just back out. Smithers looks like he may have been lagging a little bit there, but there is a lot of damage coming in towards this heavy right now, who's actually not dying yet. Loki's still alive, too, so they do take down Davis and Felon. Uh, you know what? Juanetic's gonna have to back away from this for a little while. And I do think that it's 10 minute overtimes, possibly, maybe? Well, maybe it's just 30 minutes again. I think it's 10. We'll find out. And they are just pretending to be ready to charge. I know, it's not a real Uber charge, but they are going to be back on the regular Uber. There is no point to holding a crits on defense. And, yep, regular old Medigun. And so the point to calling out that charge is just to try and fake out your opponents as to when you actually have it. <laughs> oh, look at Droog. That is that is the only way he knows how to express his love. That's all he's got, man. You know, if if you've uh, been, been raised in a an abusive home, sometimes you don't know how to say I love you. But you know what? I think we all know what he meant. Uh, my apologies to anybody who's actually raised in an abusive home, but uh, sometimes I can just be a jerk. And I am not usually repentant about that at all. Runaway 5 sitting back on that last point, though, and they are going to try and keep their medic from taking too much damage here. Do not want to have that pop too early. Heavy, though, could get focused. He's got to be careful, and the medic does come down, reconnect with him for a little while. Maniac's down, but so is Davis, and the med took just a little bit of spam there, not too much, so is going to still be in pretty good position to hold on to the Uber for a little while longer. The question is, does it matter too much? I mean, they do need to hold on to it, but if they can't ever make a push, then... They kind of have to wait for Juanetic to either get a kill or to just completely wipe out. And so right now, oh, we've, we've got double spy. Hang on. Is there... Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me see if I can do this. So Davis is number one. Oh, no. It's not even working. Crap. Okay. Well, Davis spots the sticky trap. Walks right over it. Nothing going to happen to him. Maniac, meanwhile is behind Smithers. Oh, it fails to have... No, he does force the Uber, though. And is going to die. But where is um, Davis? He's actually... Oh, not spotted yet. And so, yes, there was an Uber forced out of the red team. 
and that might give an opportunity to Arfa. Oh no, oh no, Davis, he's not even going to have to get the kills. He's just going to go for the spy cap on the point, and I think he might actually get it. Taunt. Do the taunt. Yes, that is it. Going to gut us all like Cornish game hens. That is Davis winning the game with a spy cap. We all knew it was going to happen. And thank you for watching. This has, of course, been Salamancer. Do hit subscribe. I know you love watching competitive TF2 just as much as I do. Or maybe not just as much, but close. Close. It's, it's, we were at similar levels of loving watching TF2. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. Do hit subscribe. I'm Slanner Note.